Welcome back to AP Chemistry and General Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this lesson, we're learning about the stoichiometry of electrochemistry, and specifically electrolysis. So this is kind of a continuation of the last video. My channel has the entire AP Chemistry course, so if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button and like, and don't forget to ring that bell for future notifications. I don't want you to miss a thing on my channel. Now, the equation that you see here, I equals Q over T, this is how we solve these problems. I represents the current that's passing through the wire, and that's in amperes or, or, or amps as it's often called. Now Q is the actual quantity of charge. That is an actual uh, amount of electrons that's actually the, uh, that are passing through that current, and that's in coulombs. Uh, we'll talk about you know what that means here shortly. A, a coulomb is just a very large number of electrons. Faraday's constant actually helps us to uh, understand how many coulombs there are in a mole of electrons. There are actually 96,500 coulombs in one mole, or 602 sextillion, electrons. So that's just a, little, a conversion factor to help us to talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about uh, how we use that here shortly. Now T is the time that we allow the reaction to take place. T is measured in seconds. So we have these three quantities here. We have current in amps, we have quantity of electric charge in coulombs, and then we have the time in seconds. Let's solve a practice problem. Let's say we have a current of 2.50 amps that's being passed through a wire for three minutes. What is the quantity of electric charge that passes through the wire? Well, we're just going to use that same equation. I equals Q over T. And we're just going to plug and chug. So I is the uh, current in amps, and so that's 2.50 amps. We'll plug that in for I. And then Q is going to go on top there. Do we know the number of coulombs? No, that's what the question is asking. What is the quantity of electric charge? So that's our unknown. Now T, T is the time, but I don't just write three minutes, do I? Because it has to be in seconds. So I have to multiply that by 60. So that's 180 seconds. So now I can multiply and find that Q is equal to 450 coulombs when I solve for that. So that's how we can find how much charge. Now, what if we want to actually find out how many electrons are passing through? How many moles of electrons have passed through that wire? It's actually a pretty simple conversion to go from coulombs to electrons. We're just going to use Faraday's constant. So on the bottom, I'm going to put 96,500 coulombs, and on the top, I'm going to put one mole of electrons. That's just Faraday's constant, isn't it? So coulombs cancel top and bottom, and when I divide this, I find that it's about 4.66 times 10 to the negative third moles of electrons. So that's how I can figure out how many electrons have actually passed through the wire. Well, if you've done these examples, then let's try something a little bit more complex, but also a little bit more practical. Now let's say that we have some um, some electrolysis taking place. And so you might remember from the last video that we looked at uh, producing maybe some nickel metal from a solution of nickel 2 chloride. Well, let's say that we actually do that. Maybe we're going to carry this out in some sort of industrial process. We're going to take a 10 amp current and pass it through a solution of nickel 2 chloride. And we're going to do that for one hour. So what mass of nickel metal can be plated out? So this is something that we can actually calculate. Well, we have the amps, and that's our current. We have the time, one hour. Well, let's figure out how many coulombs, the Q, the charge that we're actually going to be dealing with here. So let's plug into I equals Q over T. So I is the current. That's our 10 amps. Our Q is the electric charge. We don't know what that is yet, so we're going to leave that as our unknown. T is time. How many seconds are there in 1.000 hours? Hope you realize it's about 
3,600 seconds. If you don't know that off the top of your head, you can just plug it into a calculator and get that pretty easily. And you'll find that the Q, the total amount of electric charge, is 36,000 coulombs in this example. Well now, we're going to go from 36,000 coulombs and we're going to figure out how many grams of nickel we're going to make. And we're going to use stoichiometry for this. Now, anytime we have reaction stoichiometry, we got to have a balanced equation, don't we? Let's think about the equation that's going on here. We're taking nickel two ions. And we, we know that because the problem just comes right out and says that we have uh, nickel two chlorides. So we take nickel two and we're trying to make nickel metal from that. So it goes from nickel two to this Ni. So this is the balanced equation we're dealing with. We have to add two electrons for that to work. There's our balanced half reaction. So now we're going to start with the 36,000 coulombs that we calculated in the first step and we're going to convert this to grams of nickel at the very end. And We're just going to use our same three-step process for reaction stoichiometry that we've always used in this course. If in case you've forgotten, step one is convert to moles, step two is mole ratio, step three is convert to the final unit, which is grams in this case. So let's do the first step, convert to moles. So on the bottom, I'm going to have to put coulombs to make this cancel out. And you can probably guess I'm going to have to use Faraday's constant. So 96,500 coulombs. I convert to moles on top. It's going to have to be moles of electrons. You know, one mole of electron in uh, 96,500 coulombs. So coulombs will cancel top and bottom. I'm now in moles of electrons. Well, step two is the mole ratio. So the question is, how much nickel am I going to make? So in my mole ratio, I put electrons on the bottom and nickel on the top. And we need some numbers, some coefficients from our balanced equation. So next to nickel, let's see here. Ah, there's a one understood next to that. So I'll put a one over here. And then next to electrons, I have a, a 2. So I'm going to put a 2 next to electrons. This is a 1 to 2 ratio. So electrons are out, top and bottom. I'm in moles of nickel. I want to be in grams of nickel. So in my third step, I'm converting to final unit, which is grams. So moles on the bottom, grams on top. The periodic table tells me it's about 58.69 grams in one mole of nickel. So I can cancel moles top and bottom and do the, do the, the arithmetic on this and find that I'm going to be able to produce about 10.95 grams of nickel. So that's just stoichiometry. So we're just incorporating stoichiometry with this equation I equals Q over T. Let's do another example here. We'll do one more example. Let's say we have a 30 amp current. How long will it take to plate out 50 grams of aluminum, 50.00 grams of aluminum, from a solution of AlCl3, aluminum chloride? Well, once again, let's think about how um, we have, you know, I equals Q over T. We have the current, we have the, the I here. Do we know the Q? We don't, do we? Uh, do we know the T? Uh, no, we don't. It says how long. So I think we need to find out the Q first. We're going to have to actually calculate the current, and we're going to have to use that or do that using stoichiometry. Now, stoichiometry means we've got to have a balanced equation. So we're starting with a solution containing aluminum ions. That's Al3+. Plus, and we're trying to change that into Al at the very end. So that's going to require three electrons. So there's our balanced half reaction that we're going to use. So let's start with the 50 grams of aluminum and let's find out how many coulombs we're going to need for this in our three-step process. Once again, step one is convert to moles. So here we're going to put grams on the bottom, one mole on top, and according to the periodic table it's about 26.98 grams in one mole of aluminum. So grams are out top and bottom. Now we can do step two, which is the mole ratio. So that means aluminum goes on the bottom and electrons 
will go on top this time. And next to electrons, we have three, three electrons for every one aluminum. So this is a three to one ratio. So aluminum is out, top and bottom. We're now in moles of electrons. We want to convert to coulombs. So step three is convert to final unit. And Faraday's constant will help us do that, right? So I'm going to put moles of electrons on the bottom, specifically one mole of electrons. On the top, I'll put coulombs, 96,500 coulombs. And now I can cancel moles and electrons, top and bottom. And if I carry out the arithmetic here, I get an answer of about 536,500 coulombs. That's a lot of coulombs, isn't it? Well, now I know the current, which is up here. I know the charge in coulombs down here. Well, now I can figure out the time because the question is asking how long will it take in time? So I can plug it in to I equals Q over T. So my I, my current, is the 30 amps that we had up there in the problem. And the Q is the current. I'm sorry, the, the, the Q is the, the coulombs, the charge, rather. Got mixed up there. So we have our 536,500 coulombs on top. And our T is our time. And that's going to be in seconds. So when you divide this out to the math here, we get that it's going to be about 17,880 seconds which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's kind of hard to understand how long that is. So let's divide it by 60 and find out how many minutes that is. <coughs> Excuse me, it's about 298 minutes. And so let's divide that by 60 again to find out how many hours that is. And we find out that that's actually about four hours, 58 minutes, so almost five hours. So with a 30 amp current, it takes almost five hours to get just 50 grams. So we're not even talking uh, just a couple of ounces of aluminum from this solution of, of aluminum chloride, or this, uh, this substance here. So aluminum requires a lot of electricity in order to produce by electrolysis. Well, hope you've learned something about how to uh, calculate electrolysis uh, amounts and how much time it takes, and hope that you feel pretty comfortable with using this equation right here, I equals Q over T. If you learned something from my video, please smash that like button. I want you to uh, uh, subscribe if you haven't done so, because I want you to get a 5 on the AP Chemistry Test, or make an A in your chemistry class, whichever goal yours is, or maybe both of those. Uh, thanks for watching, and join me again for my next lesson, where we can learn some more chemistry together.